Hi guys, welcome to Unit 4 Lesson 3, and we are going to talk about solving systems of three equations, which all of you guys have done before. Um, this is kind of just like a chart to kind of go through the process. I thought I would include that for you. Basically, your, um, the easiest thing to do is to use the elimination method, unless you have something that just kind of lends itself to substitution. I think the elimination method is the easiest. So when I come to a problem like this, I just decide like, okay, which two would be easiest to eliminate? And there's really not a right or wrong answer. I'm thinking maybe these two, because I can multiply this one by two and get rid of the y. So I'm just gonna kind of start there and see what we get. Okay, so once you have that, um, your thing is we've already used like these first two here, so we can't use that combination again. But we can, <clears throat> for our next one, use like one and three or two and three, um, just like any other combination of two. So I also want to point out that we also, um, when we do our next one, we have to get rid of the y's as well. So I'm still looking at the y. So I think what I'm going to do is focus on these two. And I'm going to multiply this by negative 3. And that will get rid of the y's here. So that's what I'm going to do next. So a lot of this, your um, goal for yourself is just to kind of make it as easy as possible for you. So there's not like one right or wrong way to do this. And um, this is what I'm think seeing on here. I'm going to multiply everything through by negative 1. Um, change these signs. I don't like them all be negative. So x plus 4z equals 13. And I think what I might do is solve for x, and I'll show you why. So I'm just going to bring that 4z over. Because if I do that, I could plug that in right there and um, be able to solve for z. I think that would be a nice way to go. So I'm going to say 7x, which is 13 minus 4z, plus 10z equals 19. So if you'll notice what I'm doing, I'm getting all the z's together. So you definitely don't have to do it this way. I just think it might be a little bit nicer to do it that way. So what that did right here is it allowed me to find um, the variable z. So once you find any variable, it makes it like it goes a lot faster. So once we find z, I'm just going to look for a place that has two variables. So I might just like go over there. So 13 minus 4 times 4. So 13 minus 16 is negative 3. So, oh goodness gracious. So x equals negative 3. So I have... Let's see, negative 3, I don't know what y is, and z equals 4. So to figure out y, I think we're going to go back to this original problem, and it really doesn't matter which one. I'll probably just do that one. That looks like the easiest one. So 2 times negative 3 minus y plus 3 times 4 equals 4. So this is 6 plus 12, or sorry, negative 6 plus 12 minus y plus 4. So that is 6, so I'm going to subtract 6 on both sides, and I get negative y equals negative 2, so y equals 2. And this is my final answer. Okay, so let's go down to this one, and I want you to do the same thing and see what you get for it. So this is what I did for my first one. I combined... Um, these two to get rid of my x. So I'm just considering like, okay, what would be the easiest thing to do um, to get rid of another x? So do I do 2 and 3? Do I do um, 1 and 3? Like what would be easiest? So 1 and 2 to side and come up with another equation. Okay, so what I chose to do is I chose to multiply this one by negative 3 and this one by 2 and I ended up with this scenario. But what I'm really liking right now is that this is 2y and this is negative 2y. So I think I'm going to just bring this over. Let me see what happens. Ooh, I'm not liking it this way. So that cancels out. That cancels out. I get 0 equals negative 4. Okay, so this is a situation where 
um, we have two lines that are not touching each other, so we're going to have a no solution there. Okay, so go ahead and try this one. So on this one, I just did um, the first two, and I got this. Um, and so something I'm seeing, and you don't have to do this, but you can simplify it by three. So if I divide everything through by three, I get that. Um, and we'll see, oops, not three, sorry, two. Okay, and um, that may or may not help me, so I'm just going to keep that down there, and then I'm going to um, combine two of it. Um, so for my next one, what I did is I just took this, and moved it over here, and then I multiplied this by negative one, and moved it there. And so the same thing, I don't know, I don't, again, I don't know if this is going to help me or not, but the same thing is jumping out at me. So I think what I'll do is divide everything three by three. So I have uh, y minus 2z equals 2, and this is the same thing. So if I subtract everything, I end up with 0 equals 0. So in this case, it's going to be infinitely many solutions. And you do not have to come up, since we have like three lines coming together, you do not have to come up with a line on this one. Your answer is just infinitely many solutions. Okay, um, so this one I'm going to tell you is another no solution. So see if you can... Um, Go ahead and see if you can get that. So I just happened to multiply this by negative 3, and this, then I just brought it down here, and I ended up with 0 equals 3. So that is another no solution. Okay, so go ahead and try this one. Um, this one you should get an infinitely many solutions answer, so go ahead and try that. Okay, again, I did these two, and I ended up with 0 equals 0, so I have infinitely many solutions. Okay, we're going to do one more of the word problem, and so think about our three variables here. Number of quarters, number of dimes, number of nickels. I want you to see if you can come up with the two equations that they're looking for. Okay, so these are the two equations. Um, notice like this is a value equation. So I, I'm always saying like you need to look at it from two different perspectives. So this is a value from the perspective of the value, and this is just a sheer number of coins perspective. Um, a lot of people on this one will go ahead and just move the decimal place over to because they don't like the decimals. So like you'd have 25Q plus 10D plus 5N equals... 1,000, um, that's totally up to you. It doesn't matter. So um, I'm going to use these two here and see if you can come up with an answer. Okay, so I came up with this, and what's jumping out in my mind is there's not, like, three equations, so I can't do, like, you know, combine one and two and then two and three. Um, so there is something else that we have not talked about yet. So there's twice as many dimes as there is nickels. So there is our third one. So I don't know. I think I might treat this one a little bit differently. I think what I'm going to do is take that um, 2 in and plug it in here. Um, that might help us. I'm not sure. Let's see. So I have 2 plus 2 in plus n equals 80. So Q plus 3N equals 80. Okay. And then, <laughs> so I think what I'll do is I'll solve for Q and plug that in right there. I think that's going to get us what we need. So 15. So notice when I'm doing these, like, it's just kind of like a flip. I mean, there's not really one right or wrong way to do it, just however you see it. And I just, I don't know, I see it this way. I'm going to change colors. There's too much orange. 1200 minus 50 in. And so negative 50 in equals, I'm going to take 200 minus 1200. <clears throat> so that's negative 1000. 
and divide by negative 50, so n equals 1. So I know that there are 20 nickels. And so if there are 20 nickels, then I can figure out how many quarters there are. So let's see, 20 nickels. Um, oh, is there, let's see, I can even make it easier than that. Look at that. So if there are 20 nickels, then there's 40 dimes. And I know that there are 80 total, so then there's going to be 20 quarters. So again, the name of the game is just to keep it easy on yourself. And we are done.